Russell yeah. Brown, Joe Rogan, Douglas Joe Murray. Rogan. What are you doing, Joe Rogan? Well, well, Joe's Joe's already <laughs> the, he's, he's got he's a foot in the camp. <laughs> Did Jordan Peterson just say out loud what we've all been thinking? We're gonna get into that and much more. Folks are becoming Christian to some to some degree, mm. not like Candace Owens and Who's I that? Rod Schneider, Lee. your bride. Yeah, I and Hersey Lee, yeah. Neil Ferguson, Russell yeah. Brown, Joe Rogan, Douglas. Joe Murray. Rogan. What are you doing, Joe Rogan? Yeah, well, Joe's Joe's already <laughs> the, he's ha, he's got he's a foot in the camp. He's a lot less um, disparaging of Christianity than he yeah, once was, which, which we all really yeah, appreciate. Yeah. Yeah, Thank yeah, you, yeah. Joe. Well, Joe. Joe figured it out. Joe figured it out. Yeah, because yeah. here's why. Here, here's the answer to that. Sacrifice is the basis of the community. Yeah. Well, that's what the is the, it? What does that well, mean? of course it is. Well, it's all about you. Right, no. Well, then you're not in a community. Right. Right? That, then you're a grizzly bear. Yeah. Right? It's all about you. You don't have a community. So what do you do to join a community? You sacrifice. Obviously. Yeah. What? How about everything? Well, that's the Christian offer. Is that the basis of community? Well, well why do we put the crucifix at the center of our communities? Okay. Because we know that voluntary self-sacrifice is the basis of the stable psyche and state. We know that. Even though we don't know, we know it. That's why we worship it. It's like, well, what did Christ do? Took the sins of the world upon himself and offered everything. Well, is that the basis of community? Yeah, it's your responsibility, buddy. So is Get it at it. The crucifixion is everywhere, whether you like it or not. You can't avoid the reality that there, there has to be a God. To everyone that denies that there is a God, they still set up a crucifixion at the start. They still command you that you obey their pronouns and you adhere to their language and you worship their gods. They just don't want to call it God. So is the idea that as people kind of understand this and begin to live this way, they become a lot more open to the Christian message and find it more persuasive? Is that what's happening? Well, I also see, I think they're increasingly apprehensive about the weakness of the alternative. And this is true. Dawkins called himself a cultural Christian like two weeks ago. Well, why? Well, how about because he's terrified of the Islamic fundamentalists? Yes. How about that? Yes. So afraid that he won't speak against them in public. Right. Well, there's something to think about. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean the Christians had something right? I guess so. What? Exactly. Oh, well, they had something right. It's like, yeah, they had something right. What is it exactly that they had right? It's not just something to be terrified of the Islamic fundamentalists, but Joe Rogan, and if you guys have been watching my channel, I've been covering a lot of these topics, and I've been telling you guys this for a while now, but he has become so aware of the darkness of the spiritual realm, these unexplainable events and supernatural things that are going on around us that you can't just give a, a plausible surface level answer to anymore. Principle of voluntary self-sacrifice, that's a good one. Yeah. That's the central motif. Why else? Well, the humanists aren't doing such a great job, are they? They seem to fall into the camp of hedonism or totalitarianism at the drop of a bloody hat. And that's happened, it's happening now. It sweeps the campuses. They're the admirers of Hamas. Either you voluntarily self-sacrifice or they will mandate that you self-sacrifice. Either you serve God or you serve Fauci. Either you serve the Lord or you have the Lord science, the one who knows it all. <laughs> brutal, brutal. Yeah. The sweep of hedonistic pride, the clarion call of the Marxists. It's like there's the humanism for you. How interesting it is that everyone that protested on the college campuses recently, they never appeared after October 7th. But of course, you're supposed to believe that they're fighting for the victims. That here's where it gets really interesting, though. Like for me, I think it would be if this, and let's just choose the Christian God, if he exists and wants me to know him and save me, wouldn't he make it easier? Why does he make it so difficult? Why does he seem to hide? And because you have something to do. Okay. You have something important to do. It's no game. The price of life is death. It's not a game, right? And there's evil, too. You have something to do. It's not easy. In fact, it'll take everything you have. Everything, right? That's why you're to consecrate everything to God. This isn't, this isn't, you're not, you're not an infant. But you and you're not being treated by God like an infant. You're yeah. being treated by God like Responsible someone Responsible moral agent. He's not, he doesn't just want comfortable little pets in his, uh, yeah, well, who would want that? Who would want a God that would be controlling you? Who would want a God that would enforce everything to be perfect, yet you wouldn't even know what would be real anymore? And to be made in the image of God is to be someone who wrestles with potential. To genuinely wrestle with potential. Potent that's right. right. Okay. Well, that's the tohu right. vabohu that exists at the beginning of time, right? The potential, the watery chaos. Okay. The Spirit of God sits above the chaos, the primordial chaos, and extracts order out of that. That's what you do as a conscious agent. And you do that. You, you do that in a way that is aimed towards hell or aimed towards heaven. Really. But you wouldn't think people who claim to be atheists are necessarily irrational? Because they I'm, might, they're perfectly rational I'm if you accept the initial axiom, but I don't accept the initial axiom. Which so, is, what's the original axiom? Like I said, it's something like a materialist determinism. Yeah. Not, no. First of all, whatever matter is, and we certainly don't understand it, it doesn't look at all like something 
deterministic at the highest level of resolution. Mm -hmm. There's something very weird going on down there at the quantum level. That's why every quantum physicist, the more they do the research, the more they come to the reality that a God exists. God only knows, but there's no easy determinism in the physical realm. So anybody who claims that is like stuck in what, in, in the world of Newton. They're like in 1830. What, what, if, way the, past what that? if the person just says, all right, I'm open to believing in God or not believing in God. And I've seen no good evidence or arguments evidence, for God's existence. It's, like I said, it's an, it's an illegal game move. It has nothing to do with, see, the problem with that argument is that it's an atheist argument right from the beginning. Well, what's the evidence? It's like, belief in God is not propositional acceptance of a set of descriptive facts. Okay. That's not what it is. It's commitment, right? So what does it mean to follow in the footsteps of Christ? To believe. It means to hoist your cross and walk up the hill. If you're confused at all by what Jordan is saying, what he's getting at is faith is of the heart and not of the head. That's exactly what the Bible says. It doesn't mean that you say, what does Christ say? Not all those who say, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Well, that's for sure. Yeah. What? It's not, it's, the, the religious doctrine is not a scientific theory. It's not something you believe like you believe a description of a set of facts. Okay. It's a mode of being. It's a mode of apprehension. It's a mode of perception. All it's right. a mode of action. I, I, this is why I've made videos before talking about how I don't just believe in God. I don't just mentally ascend to the existence of God, but I know God. I, I, I know him in my heart. I don't believe that Ali exists. I don't just know about Ali as my wife. I know her intimately. And that's, and really it gets down to the fact of how much evidence do you really need? Because everyone that always says, show me evidence of God and then I'll believe will you because at this point all the evidence you've already received you haven't accepted it's like it's like you see a painting of an artist and then you look back and you say well show me the artist exists it's like you get on a plane and you finished flying a thousand miles and then you say show me the evidence that the pilot was in the plane even though you never saw him but yet you believed him the entire time it's like really because because you've already had more than enough and you wouldn't believe with that so why would you even ask for more to everyone asking for more evidence of god just look at what he's already done <laughs> But it's it's because you have to believe him here. That's what Jordan is getting at. Getting at like in order for me to marry my wife, I need to know she exists, and I need to know she's interested in me, and I need to be able to pursue her, right? To marry your wife, you need to take a leap of faith. But I need to know she exists first in order to. Oh, true. Yeah. You know, so that's what I'm saying with with God's existence. If God does exist, surely I need some kind of reason to Conscience. think this isn't just a story I'm Conscience. telling myself. Conscience. Where does that pesky little thing come from? Before we get down to one of the most interesting parts of this interview, I just want to mention how it is so accurate that not just major celebrities and and you could say um, people who have been on the fence are coming to the faith in Christ. They're coming to the realization that they've tried every other alternative. They might as well seek Jesus. They might as well just see what this crucifixion is all about. But it's the everyday person. It's the person behind the the door. It's the person that that is quiet, that is unnoticed, that is just living in the country hills of West Virginia or Alabama. I don't know, like like the father that's just trying to pay his bills and provide for his family and doesn't need to be noticed, doesn't need to be publicly celebrated, but instead he's just trying to get the job done. And like the 25-year-old man who's trying to figure himself out and just come by in this life and, I don't know, find a real woman who he can date. Like those types of people are the ones who are really seeking and coming to Christ right now because they've seen how every other alternative just leads to death life and I don't know find a real woman who we can date like those types of people are the ones who are really seeking and coming to Christ right now because they've seen how every other alternative just leads to death is it a fact that people have a divine value well build a society without that assumption mm -hmm. and see what happens Treat those around you as if they don't have it yeah right try that for a week see how popular you are with mm -hmm. everyone right mm -hmm. how do people want to be treated as if they're the embodiment of a logos see here's what no one could ever deny Every single human being is made in the very image and likeness of God. And that's why everyone's identity is being attacked right now. Left and right, no one knows who they are anymore. It's because the enemy, the adversary, has been so jealous and envious that the God of the heavens and the earth would create his own sons and daughters who were made just like him. So he's done everything within his ability to lie to you and shield your awareness of who you really are in Christ. And I don't care who you are watching this video, whether you call yourself an atheist, an agnostic, a Muslim, uh, maybe even a, a Christian. I don't care what label you put onto yourself. I would invite you now to accept who you really are as a son of God and a loved one. 
one that he has already written the plans for you, one that he's never given up on you, one in which he's already created you to be built different and win in this life and all the time even after, where you can actually understand the truth that's going on around you and you don't have to be like a ship which is just tossed by the winds and waves of the sea of your life. But instead, you can actually stay rooted in a truth that is not up for <laughs> your feelings, in the truth that isn't up for a pronoun that somebody wants to make up, but instead, a truth that is found in the unshakable word of God that existed before existence itself was even here. What if you actually died to yourself today and finally said yes to Christ? What if, just like Jesus rose from the dead thousands of years ago, he can rise again in your heart right now? Take the risk. Maybe just seek him. Maybe just open up that Bible and maybe just check out these other videos that we've made about Joe Rogan's reactions to the Nephilim and these spiritual creatures. We've gotten into some really interesting things about demonic events that have gone on. And if you want to see all those podcasts and interviews, just click right here.